Hello again. So, um, let me lose the black socks for clarity and lose the style points also for clarity. Um, <clears throat> so, two videos ago, you were asking about two different variations. Um, <clears throat> the first one, the first one is better. You were going boom, boop, and stopping here and taking a step forward. Um, the step forward is bad. The goal is not to step forward. The goal is specifically to not step forward. Um, but then the second one was worse because you were stepping more forward because you were trying to stay on the heel and let it spin you. That's worse, right? <clears throat> so what the, the whole thing we're trying to do here is get the front foot to stay there for an instant. It is gonna pivot, but realistically with how much force you're putting into it on a standstill it can just stay there you'll be a little tippy forward but like that's totally fine without the step forward because what we're trying to work on is the feeling the containment of the momentum and the stopping of the momentum inaccurate you're not stopping the momentum you're changing linear momentum into rotational momentum and then it's gonna spin you and stop here. So if you're stepping forward, you're not stopping enough of, you're not converting enough of the linear into rotational. Because in the conversion, you should lose all of your linear momentum and not have to dump forward. <clears throat> so that's, that's what I didn't explain conceptually enough. Um, we'll get into the thing that I didn't explain physically enough. So thank you for all of your questions. And like, it's, it's more beneficial for me as a coach when people don't get what I'm saying at first because it makes me think about, okay, what did I not explain right that you're not getting it yet? So helpful, even though it seems frustrating for you. Apologies. <laughs> um, but the, so we'll talk more about what the brace feels like, but the physical part that it seems like you're not understanding is that um because i kept saying your your rear leg is going forward first so what that looks like is this right if you're the people who do it the worst not you is when they pull through and they go Hacha! and they like drive they're actively trying to drive their knee forward that doesn't i mean it does work but what's going to happen if i send this weight that way spin all the way around and we don't want that <clears throat> so you actually want this rear leg to go behind your last video you sent you started to get that where it goes there and stays there so you can do that as a, a drill you're not necessarily going to throw with this much rear leg behind but I think we need to overcompensate over cue that change to get it to work and then we can dial it into where it's functional but that's kind of what the, the one leg drill is trying to teach. So maybe don't, don't put the, the rear leg here, you know, in a, a box. Don't put it on the opposite corner of the box. Put it on the front corner of the box. So that way it's more behind you and it'll more like my legs pinch together, right? So you're actually hanging your rear hip down under. So that's, that's my next cue for you is to try thinking about taking this hip not around. It's not even ever going to go this way. It's going to go here. It's going to go to this spot. I'm going to make my left hip go right here, right behind my right butt cheek. So it's going to look like that, right? I'm coming down into this leg later that will push back up and pivot onto the heel um that part's really hard <clears throat> i don't have that working yet in my personal throw because it's really counterintuitive to me to, to be pushing this hip up it's just like your body is afraid of doing it because it's putting all sorts of forces on your leg <clears throat> but we don't need that we just need this down so you'll know you're doing it right when your foot can stay behind you. So I should be able to like 
throw relatively hard and stop here without following through. With a full run up, boom, you will spin around. But you need that beat of backwards. <clears throat> so the, the cue that I landed on recently, I wrote it down here. And I can't read my own writing as always. Um, but weight shift into and under the brace, not around. So if you're doing the knee thing, your weight is going around your brace. If you're doing this, the weight of my torso counterweighted by my rear leg is going into and under my brace, right? That's the rear leg is the counterweight that allows you to stay on a hyzer tilt. So this is how Scott Stokely suggests teaching um, spike hyzers, they go really high. As he says, just, you know, learn how to throw from here. So you can throw literally a 90 degree up the spike hyzer. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of value in that position too. I think you can see this better from here. So this is kind of what, what I'm suggesting doing in the one leg drill is don't just rotate from here, right? Watch this hip. So if my hips are level, it's not really gonna work. But how I wind up is I'm gonna open that hip. So how to show um, <clears throat> here is level, right? My hips are level and then stick of learning. So my hips are level here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my left butt cheek up to where I'm not level. And then I'm going to power the move by dropping that hip, right? See how that's the same motion as here, dropping the hip down. So I end up with a hyzer tilt, right? It's, if I do it flat, then this leg has to come through. That's what doesn't work. <clears throat> so when I wind up and reach back, it's exactly the same as, make sure I'm level to start, exactly the same as this. I'm doing that to wind up, I'm opening this hip closed, open, and then I close it explosively to drop the weight in. If I'm horizontal, I can't drop, right? And I'm throwing flat, and I'm gonna spin out. If I reach back and up, now I'm on hyzer, right? The, the stick is pointed down, hyzer, then I keep that axis by keeping this foot out, still on hyzer. And then I'll get a stop here, where my thighs hit, yeah, thighs hit. I'm stopped, I feel tension in my IT band, and my toe stays down to, pro to start that chain of stopping. And then when my knee's about to blow out, I pop the toe up and rotate through. But you need that stop. So you may need footwear that grips the ground in your garage a little bit better than the flip-flops. Um, depending on the concrete, like down here, I'm pretty good. It's not oiled so much that it's, there it's oiled so much that it's slippery, but here I'm fine. So pay attention to the grip, because if your shoes are not allowing you to grab the ground, then you're never gonna learn it, right? If you're just slipping without trying to, without lifting your toe, it's not gonna work. You need, you need toe and heel engagement to get to stop. So just practice, I don't know why I'm still holding the stick, just practice that part, right? Get that motion right. And then try to get that to come a little more naturally from your, your arm motion. Because it's not going to be that aggressive and dramatic in your actual throw, unless maybe you're like Simon or someone. Like he does really, boom, hang down on that. But I think that dropping into the brace and this counterweight 
going forward and down is what makes your foot stick to the ground. If your foot doesn't stick to the ground, then you can't stay behind your brace, right? It's that boom, keeping everything. See the little like shake in my pants when you hit? <clears throat> Most people don't do that because they're floating over the brace, right? So the, the counterweight leg is really key to sticking behind the brace without popping up over it. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Ask questions if it doesn't.